Welcome to our second part of our first video with data structures and algorithms. And I wanted to uh, clarify some things about the first video, uh, and that is that we didn't prove anything in that video. It was more conceptual. I wanted to just get the idea of big O uh, across, okay? So that was not a proof, and you can't use that, uh, that, that uh, the method that we used to kind of prove to ourselves uh, that big O notation is what it is. Okay, you can't use that uh, to prove it. And we're not gonna prove big O notation itself. You can do that uh, on, your, on your own. But what we are gonna do is we're going to use big O notation to prove something else, okay? So we have a function here, and we wanna prove that it is big O n squared. Now, right off the bat, we can kind of see already that this is big O n squared because this is the fastest growing term in here, right? So, but we need to prove that anyways. So let's do that. Now, the first thing is that we need some supporting, uh, we need some supporting facts to actually prove this. We can't just say that it is because this is a leading term or because this is the fastest growing term, sorry. So let's do a little side work uh, first of all and try to find some facts that we can use to actually prove this. So I'm going to just label this as side work. Okay, so there we go. And this is not our proof. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just work on our own here. So let's do let's use the definition and plug this stuff into the definition of big O uh, notation. So we have six n squared minus twenty five n plus thirty. And that's supposed to be less than or equal to some constant a times n squared, right, our g of n. And this is supposed to be for all n greater than or equal to some positive constant b, right? Now, uh, where do we go from here? Well, let's just try some things, right? So let's first try b equal to 1. Okay, we're just trying this out. Let's just see where this takes us. Let's see what we can find out. Well, if b is equal to 1, right, then what we're telling ourselves here is that for all n greater than or equal to 1, we're going to try and uh, complete this, right? Let's try and find some a now. So let's use this and let's find some little facts, right? Well, for 1, uh, and I'm going to switch this around a little bit, we know that 1 is supposed to be uh, less than or equal to n. I just want to switch it around because you'll see in a second. What else do we know? Well, we know that uh, 1 should also be less than or equal to n squared, right? For all n greater than or equal to 1, right? That should still hold. What else can we find out? Well, we can also find out that n is less than or equal to n squared, right? That should be true if n is greater than or equal to 1. You can do the math and figure that one out. Convince yourself that that's true. So uh, let me change colors. And let's try and plug this in and find something about this. Well, we have 6n squared minus 25n. Whoops, I always do that. There we go. Five, minus 25n plus 30 is less than or equal to what? Right? Let's use some of these facts and see what we can come up with. Well, if we skip a few steps here, n squared minus 25 n squared plus 30 n squared, is that true? We can ask ourselves, is that is that true? Well, yeah, it is true because we have this kind of fact right here, right? Um, and so these terms are definitely less, make this whole thing less than or equal to this, right? So if we take this a step further. Let's combine these. Well, we found that this is actually 11n squared, right? So look at what we have here, right? We have that this is for all, all, all n greater than or equal to 1. So we have this 6n squared minus 25n plus 30 is less than or equal to 11n squared for all n greater than or equal to 1. So this looks like our definition, right? And using these facts here that we found, right, just by trying b equals 1, we can now use these things 
and prove this. We can use this in a proof. So let's do that. So I'm gonna switch colors again. Let's scroll down just a bit. And we'll do our proof right here. Now for proofs, you have to be more concise and you have to write things out. I'm not gonna write them out uh, you know, word for word. I'm gonna use some abbreviations and things like that. But uh, I think you'll get the point uh, afterwards. So what we're gonna say is, we're gonna start this off by saying, let's let A equal to 11, and we're gonna have B equal to one. And actually we won't even say, we won't even write and, not here. We're gonna say that both, I'm gonna skip some stuff. We're gonna, they're both positive, positive, thank you, I can spell, uh, constants. Right? Both are positive constants. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, what do we do next? Well, the next thing would be to say that if n is going to be greater than or equal to b, which is 1 in our case, then we know a few things, right? Then 1 is less than or equal to n squared, like we told ourselves up there. And also, n is less than or equal to n squared. So what can we do with this, right? Well, then we can say, um, uh, we'll say then the following, uh, wow, that's not it. <laughs> so then the following uh, we'll say inequality holds. Okay, sorry, let's scroll down a bit more. And I'll change color so it can stand out. So we'll write out our uh, equation that we had up here to show it. So minus 25n plus 30 is less than or equal to 6n squared minus 25n squared plus 30, which is less than or equal to 11n squared. And this is going to be for all n greater than or equal to 1 because of this fact, okay? Because of these facts up here, right? Okay, so let's keep going. We have to kind of finish this up a little bit to be a little bit more formal, okay? You can kind of uh, figure out that. And so we're gonna say, we'll say thus we have, there we go. And I'm gonna actually write this in uh, to make it look more like the definition, which is six, oops, six n squared minus 25 n plus 30 is less than or equal to 11 n squared for all n greater than or equal to one, right? Now we have our definition there and we can finally say, right? Um, say something like therefore, you can be fancy if you want, therefore uh, by the definition, and I'm just gonna abbreviate of, right, big O, I'll say, can do that however you want to. Uh, we we've shown, and let me just, just switch colors again. We've shown that f of n is less than or equal to whoops a times g of n for all n greater than or equal to b. Right uh, where. Let me see, uh, let's use blue again. And we'll say where f of n is equal to six n squared minus 25 n plus 30. We'll say g of n is equal to n squared. We'll say that uh, a is equal to 11 and b is equal to one. 
Okay, and then at the end, uh, you can put your little QED or your little square, right, for your proof. I can't fit it all on one screen, but uh, but now you can kind of see one of the ways to uh, use big O notation, right? Use it to prove something else, right? To prove that some other thing is big O, right? So there we go.